The Bible is known as the greatest story ever told, but plenty of its smaller subplots don't really hold up to narrative scrutiny. There are lots of threads in the Bible, and some of them are never really explained. Here are some huge Bible stories that were never finished. Early in Genesis, we get one of the Bible's all-time hits, the story of Cain murdering his brother Abel in a jealous rage. Genesis 4, 16-17 ends with God sending Cain to live in the land of Nod. Sounds straightforward, until you realize the Bible fails to mention where or what this mysterious place is. And Nod may not even be real, but rather metaphorical. Nod comes from a word that means wandering or exile, so some scholars suggest it's just a fancy way of saying Cain had to leave his people. Or maybe they just miswrote Zod. Oh God, Zod. On the other hand, a lot of locations in the Old Testament are real places, so maybe Nod is too. Everywhere from the Caucasus to China have been suggested as possible locations, and there's even a hamlet in England that calls itself the Land of Nod. But for now, nobody knows where the true Nod is, and we probably never will. Have you ever watched a series that goes out of its way to introduce an insanely powerful character whose mere existence changes everything, only for that character to be immediately written out? Unless you're a fan of Lost, the answer is probably no. No one writes the groundwork for, say, Thanos, ominously introduces him at the end of Avengers, and then just pretends he doesn't exist anymore. Nobody except the writers of the Bible, that is. The Bible just loves pulling stuff like that. Just check out Melchizedek, an immortal priest who appears out of nowhere and then vanishes again. The clearest reference to the unkillable priest, which sounds like the plot of John Wick 4, comes in Hebrews 7. There, the author describes Melchizedek as a guy, quote, without father or mother, without beginning of days or end of life, resembling the Son of God. The eternal proto-Jesus, who was so important that Abraham paid tithes to him, is also mentioned in Psalm 110, which vaguely alludes to Melchizedek being a prototype for a future messiah. The messiah turned out to be Jesus, so it's entirely possible Melchizedek is God's first attempt at making mankind savior. That would seem like a pretty big deal, which makes it even weirder that he's never mentioned again. Of all the merely hinted at backstories in the Bible, the history of the Nephilim has to be the most tantalizing. Genesis 6 says they were created by the union of sons of God and daughters of humans, with the King James Version flat out calling them giants. But before we can learn much about them, God goes and destroys the entire earth in an apocalyptic flood, and everything not on Noah's Ark drowns. But wait, like a Doctor Who cliffhanger giving us the merest glimpse of a Dalek to keep us coming back next week, the fourth book of the Bible then drops in a gasp-inducing passage. Numbers 13, 32-33 includes a report on a nearby land some of the Israelites visit, where the Nephilim still roam and are now so big that the Israelites look like grasshoppers to them. If you're hoping for Attack on Titan Bible Edition, though, prepare to be disappointed. After that, the Nephilim just vanish. We hear about something vaguely Nephilim-like in Deuteronomy 3, where the defeated King Og is said to sleep in a bed that is 13 and a half feet long. But Og is apparently a Rephate, a different race of giants the Bible tells us exists then also never bothers to fill us in on. Come on, guys, stop leaving us hanging. Witches have generally been frowned upon by the church because, you know, they get their wicked powers from the devil and all that sort of stuff. So how do you explain the time the king of Israel visited a witch and she totally summoned the dead spirit of a great Hebrew prophet? It happened in 1 Samuel 28. Right after the prophet Samuel dies, King Saul prays for guidance. Nothing happens, so he does the obvious thing. He consults the Ewoks. I do believe they think I am some sort of god. <laughs> Okay, no, but he does consult a woman known as the Witch of Endor. She summons the ghost of Samuel, who promptly chastises Saul for straying from God, and predicts he and his sons will die in battle the very next day. Spoiler alert, he's right. This is also a major plot twist, up there with discovering the island in Lost can travel through time. Apparently, there actually are good witches, like Sabrina. But despite this amazing twist, the rest of the Bible still dumps all over witches, leading to centuries of persecution. Doesn't seem fair, does it? The Book of Job is an odd book, as it features God in the role of the villain, like a wrestler who just turned heel. And like a pro wrestler, it even features a section in Job 40, 14-24, where God just straight up brags about how awesome he is. But rather than bagging WWE titles and clobbering Stone Cold Steve Austin, God's biggest brag turns out to be creating something called Behemoth. Behemoth is some kind of big monster. God goes into epic details about its cedar-like tail and iron-like limbs which are apparently so strong it can withstand a rushing river. He then follows this up in Job 41 with a similar brag about Leviathan, a gigantic sea monster that is apparently also a fire-breathing dragon. 
While most people these days know Behemoth and Leviathan as monsters from the Final Fantasy series, some Christians think the verses prove that God created the dinosaurs. You did. You crazy son of a you did. You'd think a couple of dinosaurs running around the Old Testament might be something that people would mention from time to time. Where art Ezekiel? Eaten by velociraptors, my lord. But no, Behemoth appears and then disappears again in a single monologue. And maybe that's just as well. Yeah, but your scientists were so preoccupied with whether or not they could, they didn't stop to think if they should. Check out one of our newest videos right here! Plus, even more grunge videos about your favorite stuff are coming soon. Subscribe to our YouTube channel and hit the bell so you don't miss a single one.